everyone, welcome back to another episode of Little Bumble Bear's Let's Play. I'm Kristen and we are back with more Magic School Bus. This is the Magic School Bus Explores the Rainforest. Ooh, look at all those vines and butterflies and the frog. Oh, I can't wait. I hope you guys will enjoy. Please give the video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Do you remember playing this amazing school bus game? Or maybe you played some of the other ones. Let me know if you're a fan. And of course, subscribe for more nostalgic gaming. Check out the playlist in the description box. See other Magic School Bus games and other games by Scholastic. I also have a playlist for Microsoft games. I actually label these uh, Magic School Bus games under two playlists. So you can find these in both of those, the Microsoft game playlist and the Scholastic game playlist. Um, but yeah, so subscribe and I hope you enjoy. I have a Twitter and Instagram you can follow and a Discord server. You're more than welcome to come join. And hey, I want to say a big thank you to all of the members who have been joining lately. It's so great to meet you all and make new friends. Uh, but yeah, if you're not in the server and use Discord, please come join the community. I think you'll love it. It's a very wonderful, kind place. All right, well... Let's get started. Enjoy. Top of the rainforest to your class. Click around the classroom to detect my class's dilemma. Click on Wanda's toolbox when you're ready to help. Click the bus when you're ready to go. It should be easy to get some rain for my project. All I have to do is plan a picnic, and then I know it will rain. But how do I show rain indoors? I wonder what kind of homes animals have in the rainforest. If it rains that much, I hope they have gutters. on the continent of Africa all differ from one another. African rainforests are typically shorter than rainforests in the rest of the world. They also aren't as dense. This makes it easier for elephants who happen to be passing through. together forever in the form of this tree. 
I have to show that different animals live in different parts of the forest. That sounds easy, but which animals go where? Don't big animals live on the ground and small ones live in the trees? That makes sense, Phoebe. But I saw a picture of a big jaguar in a tree. The tropics are a great environment for animals. Plenty of food, no winters, and a wide variety of plants. No wonder there are so many animals in the rainforest. The largest rainforests left on Earth are in Central and South America. The Amazonia rainforest of Brazil is home to spectacular creatures like the Pink River Dolphin and the Giant Armadillo. Amazonia is truly amazing. Wanda's toolbox isn't working? Click on it. monitor shows how our classroom can change with each bio clone we find. I can't wait till we find them all. Then our classroom will look great. But it doesn't look like anything's happened. We probably need to find more of the missing items from the toolbox. get our classroom decorated in time for Rainforest Day. This bioclonic toolbox of Rainforest models that I bought looked so good in the catalog, but now there's stuff missing. Maybe if we just leave the toolbox alone, it'll decorate the room by itself. After all, the rainforest seem to do just fine on their own. But Arnold, the rainforest had millions of years to get that way. We only have a week. If only we could figure out what's missing from Wanda's toolbox. There are thousands of different kinds of butterflies in the rainforest. That's one of the reasons why rainforests are so wonderful. rainforests die and then rebuild themselves all the time. I don't get it. How can something die and then fix itself back up? Rainforests help recycle carbon dioxide into the oxygen that everybody needs to breathe. And by reducing the amount of carbon dioxide in the air, they help prevent global warming.
rainforests need water, and lots of it. It rains just about every day in a rainforest. Animals are great at adapting to the environment they live in. But I can't make my paper Katie did camouflage itself as well as the real thing. Birds in the rainforest are colorful, beautiful, and diverse. But I wonder why their wings sometimes look so short. According to my research, those short, broad wings are great for flying in between all the trees in the dense forest. Asian rainforests range from the west coast of India to Indonesia, the Philippines, New Guinea, and some of the tropical islands of the Pacific. Here, animals like orangutans and macaques live among the tall trees that look like giant lollipop orchards. Asian rainforests are a rainforest in the northwestern USA, which are wet and cool, but not cold. Unlike rainforests in the rest of the world, these rainforests don't have lots of different species. But they do have some neat animals that are all their own, like banana slugs, rubber boas, and elk. I know that I'm adapted to my home environment. It has everything I need. My family, my computer, and lots of food. But the best part is having no predators around. Sometimes the birds in a rainforest are invisible because they're all hiding or not moving. Then presto, dozens of different kinds appear at once. You think a soccer team knows about defense? You should see some of the plants of the rainforest when it comes to protecting themselves. To keep from getting munched on, many rainforest plants have leaves that are poisonous to insects. One example is the bush that makes tea leaves. Insects hate it. Good thing my mom isn't an insect. She loves tea. Ants might not look majestic, but they're the real kings and queens of the rainforest. They live throughout the ecosystem and affect it in many ways. There are some funny fish in the rainforests, including ones that like to eat the fruit that falls in the water. I've heard of fruit flies and flying fish, but I've never heard of fruit fish. These insects are really bugging me. My beetles look like bees, and my katydid looks like a leaf, and my butterflies are bright blue because I ran out of orange paper. Everyone knows insects don't look like that. Ready, class? Let's blast off to the Costa Rican rainforest. But our first stop is the Division of Driver's Licenses. Before you can drive the bus, you have to get your license. Click the controls to the right side until you get the face looking just the way you want. It. 
the drizzle guided tour of the dashboard. Anytime you want to travel, just turn the steering wheel to choose a new place. The buttons to the right of the steering wheel will push down to show you where you're pointing the bus. When you push down on the place you want to go, click the steering wheel and we're off. If outside exploration is part of your plan, click the little doors on the right and out we go wherever we are. Click the Rainforest Toolbox to see what tropical trinkets you need to find. Click the Sound button to turn the sound on or off. Click the Knapsack to see a map of the rainforest we're visiting. If you want to know about the other things on the bus, click the question mark and I'll be right back. Exploring outside, you'll see your favorite forest travel any time you want to travel, just turn the steering wheel to choose a new place. The buttons to the... Pioneer trees grow where no trees have gone before, taking over newly opened sunny spaces in the tree gap. To thrive here, they have to grow fast. Like the Cecropia tree, that reaches the sky quickly by putting up hollow stems instead of thick, sturdy ones. But competition is fierce, and eventually these trees are edged out of the sunny spots by tougher and taller rivals. Understory palms know that patience pays off. They survive for years on tiny amounts of sunlight until a nearby tree falls. Then they grow as much as they can before other trees shade them in again. The walking palm is especially good at finding light. It grows along the ground until it finds a sunlit spot. It's walking towards the light, so to speak. Canopy trees are both the support columns and the roof of the rainforest. Their leaves keep the rainforest warm and wind-free. Their mighty trunks and branches support the vines and bromeliads that are home to everything from monkeys to frogs. But the trees are also greedy and absorb almost all of the sunlight, leaving very little for the plants below. Trees by Car Trees by Carlos. Flowers by Tim. If you were a member of the orchid family, you'd have more relatives than any other plant in the world. There are more than 25,000 different types of orchids. Some have spectacular big flowers, and some have very tiny blossoms. Orchids use clever tricks to get pollinated. Some flowers look like female bees so that the male bees are attracted to them. Other orchids produce smells that euglossian bees find irresistible. Check this out. Many of the most beautiful flowering plants of the rainforest can live in people's houses. The visitors from the rainforest that do best indoors are the understory plants. That's because they're used to growing without a lot of sunlight. The way I see it, home is wherever your roots are. Do you have any wild relatives that live in the rainforest? Pineapples do, and they're called bromeliads. Bromeliads live on trees, holding onto the branches with their roots. On top of each bromeliad is a tight ring of leaves that catches enough rainwater to make a little pond. 
Dozens of small animals and plants can live in this pond. The waste from these creatures gives the bromeliad all the food it needs. Sounds perfect? The only problem is that too many bromeliads in the branches can tip over a tall tree. Insects by Ralphie In the tropics, insects rule, and insect numero uno is the ant. Rainforest ants do all sorts of incredible things, like cleaning up the leaf litter and planting seeds. Army ants run raiding parties for food and make houses out of their own bodies. Leafcutter ants farm fungi on leaves they collect from the forest. Some ants even protect the plants and animals that give them food and nectar. Yup, ants are amazing and abundant. You've heard of the age of dinosaurs. Well, some scientists say we're living in the age of the insects. And no insects are more bountiful than the beetle. One biologist estimated that 18,000 species occurred in just a couple of acres of rainforest in Panama. Are beetles diverse? Definitely. They can be small, sparkling gems like tortoise beetles or tough tanks like rhinoceros beetles. Some beetles fly by day, others fly by night. Some night beetles, like the fireflies, make their own light. Others, like the click beetle, absorb light all day and then glow in the dark all night. Roaches don't just live in your kitchen and in roach motels. In the rainforest, Roaches live just about everywhere. Many species actually live in families, where the parents provide food and protection for their young. Not all of them look like the roaches you step on. Some roaches are quite handsome and can be cream-colored, deep dark brown, or even blue. Blue? Hmm, I could decorate my locker with them. Wait, what am I thinking? Birds by Arnold. The king of the Costa Rican rainforest sky is the spectacular harpy eagle, a giant bird that stands up to three and a half feet tall. The harpy builds its nest with sticks high in the treetops of the tallest trees. These huge hunters zip through the branches picking off sloth and unsuspecting monkeys. Harpy eagles need lots of land to live and hunt on. As more of the rainforest is being used by people, harpy eagles are becoming rare. In some places, they're even extinct. Have wings, will travel is the motto of many rainforest birds. They have the best of both worlds, spending the winter in the warm tropical rainforest and the summer further north in cooler places like the United States and Canada. The robin, which brings this first sign of spring to New York, may have come all the way from Central America. A thousand mile trip! If you spend any time in the rainforest, you'll probably hear the barking croak of the toucan. Look up and you'll see the toucan sitting in a fruit tree, snipping off hard to reach fruit with its long bright bill. Those bills look heavy, but they're actually very light. Toucans' bills are hollow and crisscrossed by thin supporting rods. Toucans also eat lizards, snakes, eggs, and the chicks of other species. Toucans are a tough bunch and will quickly bully other birds away from food and even out of their homes. Reptiles and Amphibians by Wanda Lizards of all colors and sizes scuttle and scurry around the rainforest. There are little brown anolis lizards and flashy blue-tailed amoeba lizards. Most lizards are insect eaters, but not iguanas. These big, green, dinosaur-looking lizards sit in the treetops and eat leaves all day. They can easily grow up to six feet long. 
Iguanas are hunted by jaguars, who wait for the giant lizards to come out of the treetops to lay their eggs in underground burrows. Frogs and toads come in so many shapes, sizes, and colors that they could be called the rainbows of the rainforest. But frogs and toads everywhere seem to be mysteriously disappearing. One example is the golden toad of the Monteverde Cloud Forest in Costa Rica. This spectacular orange-gold toad, which used to be found everywhere in its wildlife preserve, has not been seen for years. The golden toad has become a symbol of the mysteriously disappearing amphibians. The rainforest is full of slithering snakes, but many are hard to see because they blend in so well with their environment. The fair de lance viper and the boa constrictor blend into the surrounding leaf litter which makes it easy for them to sneak up on their prey. The giant boa constrictor will wrap its coils around a victim and squeeze it to death. Mammals by Dorothy Ann Some of the world's most beautiful wild cats, like ocelots, Pumas, jaguars, and jaguarundi live in tropical rainforests. Some of them, like pumas, live as far north as the western USA. When you see a big cat, never ever run away from it. It might chase you just for the fun of it, and 300 pounds of jaguar muscle will win every time. According to my research, the best strategy is to face the wild cat and shout or clap walking slowly towards it. Rainforests make life pretty easy for monkeys. The climate is warm, there's food all year round, and best of all, the monkeys can spend all their time in the trees, far away from the predators that live on the ground. Like humans, monkeys tend to be very social and travel in large family groups. Babies travel on the adults' backs as they swing and jump through the trees looking for food. The monkeys that live in this part of the world are well adapted for tree travel. Some of them have long curling tails that they use like a fifth hand. I guess you could say that their tails are very handy. When it gets dark in the rainforest and you hear wings flapping and see dark silhouettes against the night sky, you know that the bats are out and about. In the tropics, bats are as common as field mice are in North America. Most bats eat fruit and insects, but vampire bats eat other mammals and small rodents. According to my research, there is even a fishing bulldog bat, which uses its big feet to catch fish near the surface of the water. Parasites by Keisha Look around and you'll notice that animals are always scratching and cleaning themselves. That's because just about every animal has parasites that try to drink its blood or lay their eggs on the animal. When monkeys sit around preening each other, it's not just a social activity. It's a matter of good health. Ticks, fleas, and flies are just some of the parasites that attack larger animals every day. No wonder the scratching and cleaning goes on forever. Even plants can be parasites. Mistletoe is a plant parasite that lives on top of other plants and takes nutrients out of them, often killing them in the process. Warm-blooded creatures like jaguars and monkeys aren't the only targets for parasites. Insects make tempting targets for insect parasites, like wasps. Tiny wasps lay their eggs inside caterpillars and other insects. The young wasps hatch and eat their victims alive from the inside out, and then they emerge from the sides of their victims. Bad, oh bad, oh bad, for the caterpillar, that is. Rainforest Fundamentals by Miss Frizzle Weather is very important to a rainforest. A rainforest needs lots of rain, more than six feet of rain a year to be exact. 
Hmm. But it also needs lots of sunlight to keep the temperature just about 82 degrees all year round. The wind plays a part, too. Down in the understory, you might not feel the wind. But up in the canopy, the winds can blow hard enough to knock down the older trees. Oh, this isn't bad because it helps create the tree gap that the forest uses to renew itself. Just like an ocean, a rainforest has many different layers of life. There are animals that only live near the ground, like tapers, and animals who only live in the trees, like sloths. Every animal in the rainforest lives in the area that's best for it. A sloth's long arms and legs are great for hanging around in trees, but they're not much use on the ground. A taper's hooves make it impossible for him to climb a tree. But down on the ground, a great place for him to scavenge for food. Products of the Rainforest by Phoebe Not only are rainforests beautiful, they are also beneficial to humanity. One quarter of the world's drugs come from plants. And most plant species live in the rainforest. Scientists think that they will find many more cures for diseases by exploring the plant and animal life of the rainforest. Right now, the saliva of vampire bats is being used to develop a drug to prevent heart attacks. Did you know that there are 30,000 plants in the world with edible parts? But most of the food that people eat comes from just 20 of those plants. Some famous rainforest foods include pineapple, chocolate, Brazil nuts, heart of palm, bananas, mangoes, and papayas. But there are many others that most people have never tried, like tamarinds, cherimoyas, carambolas, coquitos, lulos, and mamones. You might even be chewing a piece of the rainforest right now. The chewy part of gum comes from the Manocara zapota, a species of the chiclay tree. Chiclay trees are also an important source of timber and latex. At my old school, we learned that many useful building materials and textiles come from the rainforest plants. You might even be chewing a piece of the rainforest right now. The chewy part of gum comes from the Manocara With a new look is what you're after, this is the place you see your face. <laughs> this is where you'll keep the pictures from all the places you visit. You've learned so much about rainforests, why not make one for yourself? Just take a leaf, dip it in the pigment, and start painting. Click the jaguar to scare the paint right off your canvas. Nice draw you got there, partner, but it's time to saddle up and head back to the rainforest. Can you tell which one of these is a sloth and which is a termite's nest? I'll give you a hint. The termite nest is the speedy one. Just kidding. Talk about two lumps on a log. Who's 
making all that racket? I'll give you a hint. They're green. They buzz and they're only three inches long. No, they're not electric pickles. They're cicadas. And they're singing a little cicada love song. Isn't that sweet? comes full circle. Take this fruit. A monkey did. He ate it and pooped the seeds out. Guess what grew from that? More fruit trees. And how's that for a fruitful cycle? <laughs> If you want to help my class finish their classroom rainforest, you need to find the item missing from this tropical toolbox. Everybody does it, and it's every animal's way of giving something back to the environment. It may be yucky to some, but for the rainforest, it's a fertilizing feat. The sloth ate lunch and left a treasure behind. Go ahead, bioclone it in the rainforest. You may think it's not much, but some tree is happy for the donation. You might not want to step in this fertile pile, but you can bioclone it in the understory. shows how our classroom can change with each bio clone we find. I can't wait till we find them all. Then our classroom will look great. It sure looks luscious out there. Click the yellow doors on the right if you want to go outside to explore. I'll say, it sure looks luscious out there. Click the yellow doors on the right if you want to go outside to... This rainforest at a glance map will show us around. Click each section to hear about its highlights. It's hide time for you to visit the mimicry and camouflage zone. It's hide time for you to visit the mimicry and camouflage zone. Where the sun shines in, there's sure to be a garden. Let's not mince words. The tips of the treetops are not just for birds.
As I always say, there's no better way to take a look around than being outward bound. And while you're at it, keep your eyes peeled for bioclones for the rainforest toolbox. Wanda, something tells me he doesn't want you to scratch him behind the ears and rub his belly. All these animals and plants. How could one place have so much different stuff in it? Diversity is the rainforest's middle name, Ralphie, or my middle name isn't Felicity. No! Hey, Liz, you picked a fine time to play Tarzan. A uh, fine time to play Tarzan? Oh, brother. Welcome, intrepid explorer, to our deluxe bioclonic four-dimensional rainforest toolbox. Brought to you courtesy of the Costa Rican Rainforest and Correctamundo Cloning Corporation. Everybody does it. This is no time to sit. The jaguar is the king of this jungle, and that's no lion. <laughs> Thousands of species of butterfly live in the rainforest. One of the rarest butterflies, the eight-spotted skipper, lives right around here. Only two of them have ever been found. Hey! I think I found the third one. Life in the rainforest is so intricate. <laughs> that jaguar's had enough of us for now. Let's get back on the bus. Let's go outside.
bees and be look-alike. Well, see palm. Glass-winged butterflies. Yikes! Uh, let's get back on the bus and check out another part of the rainforest. What grows up must come down. Sooner or later, even the sturdiest tree falls over, knocking a hole in the forest. But don't think the hole stays empty for long. Oh, let's do the toucan tango. People think the rainforests are dangerous, but some people have explored them for years and never even seen so much as a poisonous snake. And I plan to be one of them. I hope. <laughs> Who rules this rainforest? None other than that spotted panther, otherwise known as El Tigre, Senor Jaguar himself. Let's check him out. Tropical weasels who adapt to living just about anywhere. Pyras have been spotted in the trees, on the ground, and outside the forest in the grasslands. When it comes to food, Pyras are definitely not one-stop shoppers. They'll eat an animal or a fruit, or whatever they can find in the trees or on the ground. Or in my lunch bag. Hey! Get out of there! These are uranium moths. Every few years, thousands of them gather in huge clusters and migrate for hundreds of miles. Some tree fall gaps happen when people cut trees down for wood or so they can farm the land. lump in that tree? Now, it's not a slob. It's a termite nest. In some parts of the world, termite nests can be up to seven feet tall and hold thousands and thousands of termites. Thousands of termites in one nest? Boy, if I had a nickel for every termite in that nest, I'd be one rich Ralphie. <laughs> Let's go over to... Yeah. Some tree fall gaps happen when people cut trees down for wood or... The Hamelia's guests aren't so neat. Take this koati, please. With his big claws and long snout, he'll tear up dirt, rotten logs, or anything just for a snack. Looks like he'll get it, too. Those teeth and claws will make short work of almost anything's hiding space. You might not want to step in this fertile pile, but you can bio-clone it in the understory. You may think it's not much, 
But some tree is happy for the donation. The sloth ate lunch and left a treasure behind. Go ahead, bioclone it in the rainforest. Everybody does it. Click the green clue button to hear hints about our missing bioclone. Everybody does it. Click the green clue button. Heliconius butterfly, Yucatan squirrel, Tyra, Urania moth, Arasari, Jaguar, This rainforest, none other than that spotted panther, otherwise known as El Tigre, Senor Jaguar himself. Let's check him out. Welcome to Correcta Mundo, the game show of rainforest trivia. I am your host, El Tigre, and today's contestants are the Spider the Monkey, Fair the Lance the Viper, and Iguana the Lizard. The first question for 100 points is, what animal is the top predator in the rainforest eating anything from frogs to fish to tapirs? Millipedes! Wrong. It is me, the jaguar. <laughs> now for 200 points, which predator is equally active day and night? My Aunt Sylvia? Wrong. It is me, the Jaguar. <laughs> now for 300 points and our grand pies of our very own Cecropia tree, which animal has a spotted coat and is worshipped in many native cultures as a god? Um, by it would be you, the Jaguar? Mundo. You are our new champion, but I am still hungry, so I'll eat you anyway. <laughs> Thanks for playing Correcto Mundo. Join me next week when my lunch, uh, I mean our contestants will be a peccary, a three-toed sloth, and a caiman. Bye-bye. Hummingbird feed a beetle. Hmm. Watch. While hunting for nectar deep inside, this hungry hummingbird pollinates a flower. That flower grows into a plantain whose leaves make a meal that's just right for this beetle. <laughs> that's one beautiful food web. <laughs> This rain 
forest at a glance map will show us around. Click each section to hear about... You want to take this outside? Well, all right then. Sometimes rain isn't the only thing falling in the forest. Trees fall too, and when they do, they pull down everything around them, making an open space we call the tree fall gap. Stupendous stuff grows in the gap, and it makes for excellent exploring. can be a nursery for one species and a snack bar for the other. Look at a bromeliad. Rainwater collected in it and made a tiny pond. A mosquito laid her eggs on the water and now the larvae are wriggling around just in time for a warbler to eat them. It's all part of life in the rainforest. But without the tree, the bromeliad, the rain and the mosquitoes, the warbler would not be eating this midday meal. <laughs> I'll say, it sure looks luscious out there. Click the yellow doors on the right if you want to go outside to it. Outside it is! Catch that breeze, class. Check out this bird's eye view of the rainforest as we check out the canopy. As I always say, there's no better way to take Bromeliads have whacked. Look at all these orchids. I thought orchids were really rare. Actually, Arnold, they're the most common plant in the rainforest. In fact, there are more species of orchid than any other plant in the world. Why couldn't I just go to a normal school where lizards stay on the ground and teachers climb step stools? As I always say, Arnold, there's always more than one way to get wherever you want to go. Many orchids grow in trees. Their roots cling to the bark and they soak up nutrients from dead leaves and twigs that fall on them. Mmm, mmm, nothing I like better than a lunch of dead leaves and twigs. Yuck! If orchids were really smart, they'd learn to eat pizza. This is a mantled howler monkey. Like all animals in the rainforest, she is really something to howl about. We are, class, amongst the menagerie of plants and animals in this tiny slice of the canopy. Watch your step, or you'll be walking on air. We're really up there. Anyone who told you not to play in the rain never played the rain game. Oh, you rain, rain, it's a game. Play it twice, it's not the same. Well, if you can't make rain disappear, help a beetle to steer clear. Go get him! Use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move Stevie Beetle left and right. The only keys you need to press are the left and right arrow keys.
Whoa! You can't beat the beetle game, but if you gotta go, I'll see you later. I've heard there's a story for every frog in the rainforest. Here's a frog, so let's hear her story. Tonight on Central America's Most Poisonous, the Poison Dart Frogs. Hello, I'm Bill Heron, and tonight we ask your help in locating some very poisonous frogs. Be on the lookout for these toxic amphibians, but if you see them, don't even think about eating them. There are dozens of these little creatures in the canopy, in the leaf litter, in the swamps. They sit out in the open all day wearing bright colors, daring you to eat them. But those bright colors are a warning. These frogs are poison. This security camera video taken by our undercover reporter, Felicia Heron, shows several tadpoles suction to their mother's back, getting a free ride up to a bromeliad hideout. There, the sneaky critters will grow up in safety, eating unfertilized eggs dropped by their mother. Later, they'll walk the forest safe from all predators except bats and man. Bats know how to eat these frogs and avoid the poisonous parts. And humans like the members of the Choco tribe scrape the frog's skin in order to coat their arrows with poison. If you see these frogs, remember, they are slimy and extremely toxic. But only with your help can we find Central America's most poisonous. who told you not to play in the rain never played the rain game. Oh, uh-oh. I think the sun's coming out. See you next time it rains, which won't be long around here. If the snake's about to bite you, you should just say, thanks, but no fangs. Do sloths have tails? This one does. Listen carefully, class. Any three? Nope. Go fish. Don't rush me. When the sun goes down, it's the perfect time to play night stratification. Even at night, the rainforest stays lively. But like other species, night creatures are best suited to life in specific parts of the forest. Help these animals out by putting them where they belong, from dusk till dawn. Do you want to play the easy game or the hard game? If you need help, click the question mark at the top of the screen. <laughs> exactly! Oops, because that one goes somewhere else. Whoa, I guess she doesn't like it there, and they... Exactly! Oops, I guess that one goes in a different place. Check it out! 
That <laughs> animal's where it belongs. Check it out. That animal's where it belongs. Oops. I guess that one goes somewhere else. Yikes, try again. Whoa, I guess she doesn't like it there, and they... Check it out. That animal is where it belongs. Okay, okay. Yikes, try again. Oops, I guess that one goes somewhere else. Okay, okay. <coughs> exactly. <coughs> Whoa, I guess exactly. <coughs> That's it. <coughs> Yo, try again. <coughs> Whoa, I guess. That's it. <coughs> exactly. <coughs> exactly. <coughs> That's very good. You didn't place all the animals, but at least you got some. Next time, I know you'll get even more. See you later. And remember, nighttime is the right time when you play Night Stratification. That's a mantled howler monkey. Sometimes they're hard to see because they hide out in the branches. Yeah, but even if you can't see them, you can sure smell where they've been. Whoa, look out below. <laughs> <laughs> no time for monkeying around. It's time for the escaping monkey game. Help Adelaide the spider monkey rejoin her group. But look out for the hungry harpy eagle or else. You... The mouse is all you need for this game. Move it where you want Adelaide to go, and if she can, she will. Press the button when you want her to jump. Why stop now? Click yes to start another game, or click no to take it. To you, mistletoe might be something you get kissed under at Christmas. But to a tree, mistletoe is a thief, and sometimes a killer. All these plants and animals have made their homes up here. I've heard of tree houses, but this is one high up habitat. Spider monkey. Spider monkey. Mantled howler monkey. 88 butterfly. Three toed sloth. Red eyed tree frog. Mantled Howler Monkey. Go outside. Catch that breeze, class. Check out this bird's eye view of the rainforest as we check out the canopy. According to my research, frogs spend almost their entire lives hanging upside down from branches, eating leaves, and sleeping. They move very, very slowly. Who needs to hurry? 
when you've got it made in the shade. It looks like a big field of leaves up here. Like you could just walk across the tops of the trees all the way to the horizon. Ah! What kind of cologne would a bee use? Beeswax number five? BK1? I know, Eternabee! Carlo! Ah! Once a pair of toucans has taken over part of a fruit tree, the male will defend it from everyone except his mate. Hmm, I guess to a toucan, all's fair in love and fruit wars. If you want to follow the iguana, we'll learn more about the creatures of the canopy. Now let's get the word on the birds and the other creatures of the canopy. Bromeliads are more than just a plant-style bucket. There are whole communities of plant and animal life centered around these tiny ponds high in the trees. Here's the scoop. Welcome to Bromeliad Plant. To the casual visitor, these bromeliads may just be water tanks made of leaves. But those who live here know that real drama that unfolds here every day. and the frogs. Both lay eggs in the water, and young frogs love to eat mosquito larvae. The surviving mosquitoes are out for blood, and they'll get it when they bite the adult frogs. Charming, isn't it? Then, there's a salamander, just stopping by for a drink. But, this snake might have other ideas. And of course, there's the bromeliad itself. What does she get from all these guests? Only their dirt, but that gives her all she needs. Oh, that and any water she can soak out of the air around her. Bromeliad Place, every Monday on Channel Zero. Forest really grows on you, literally. We better get moving before vines and bromeliads start to take root on the bus. You didn't like your lunch yesterday? At least you didn't eat a poisonous bug. Help this Jackamar find a better lunch this time when we play bird food. Sometimes it's hard to tell what's good to eat and what's not. Help Jacqueline and Rufus tell Jackamar fly around and eat butterflies. But watch out, brightly colored butterflies are poisonous. And if Jackie eats too many of them, she'll lose her appetite. Click where you want Jackie to go. If she sees a butterfly nearby, she'll eat it. almost carried off that frog. That must be one powerful bird. That's a harpy eagle, Carlos. And monkeys and sloths are its main meal. Parrot snakes hang out in trees and eat mostly insects and lizards. Mom. 
Montezuma's Oropendula is an omnivore. That means it can eat plants and meat. But its favorite meal is fruit. Sure beats eating bugs and snakes. Besides, when's the last time you heard about fruit trying to get away? Bromeliad. Rufus Tailed Jackamar. Montezuma's Orapendala. Parrot Snake. You glossing bee. You want to take... The female 88 butterfly has spots in the shape of the number 88 on her wings. Finding one of these butterflies is supposed to be good luck. And look at that. You're on a field trip to the rainforest where you get to see exotic butterflies. How's that for good luck? Giant Iguana, Bromeliad. Mannequin, Chestnut Mandible Toucan. Spider Monkey, Turkey Vulture, Monkey Pot Tree. Chestnut Mandible Toucan, Three-Toed Sloth. Scarlet Tanager. Capuchin.
<laughs> this rainforest at a glance map will show us around. Click each section to hear about its highlights. There's a river racing through this rainforest. Click around and check out the trinkets in the toolbox. If you're ready, drive the bus to the rainforest and click the doors to explore. Oh, the sun is luscious out there. Click the yellow doors on the right if you want to... This vampire bat is no bloodsucker. It prefers to cut its prey and lap up the blood instead. One thing's for sure, it's an awesome creature. Any way you slice it. Out. All right, class, let's take it to the bridge, or at least to the river. Just ask and I'll deliver. Here we are at the river. Now, let's take a look. Wow, check out this glass frog. You can see almost clear through to its insides. I... Even without the piranhas, I don't want to go swimming until I know exactly what's in there. I'm not going near that water. It's probably full of piranhas. Cool out, Ralphie. Piranhas only live in the Amazon. Even without the piranhas, I don't want to go swimming until... <laughs> I'm not going near that water. It's probably full of piranhas. Is that an otter? I thought they only lived up north. You mean an otter not be here? <laughs> Carlos. And why shouldn't they be here? There's good weather and fish to catch and having a fur coat doesn't necessarily keep you out of the tropics. This glass frog just laid some eggs on that leaf over the stream. Now she's going to watch them for a day to make sure they're all right. I think it's apparent that frog is a semi-transparent parrot. Carlos! Compared to the Amazon, there are very few fish in the Costa Rican rainforest. To some, the bright blue morphal butterfly is a symbol of the rainforest. And to some others, their wings are just a piece of jewelry. Thousands of male morphos die this way every year. Machaca fish eat fruit that falls in the river. I bet there's one down there now, waiting for something to drop from the... This land was formed more than 100 million years ago, but there still aren't a lot of fish here. Scientists say that fish take a long time to evolve from salty ocean life to fresh river life. One reason the jungle looks so dense from the river is that plants grow thickest on the edge of the forest. All this sunlight and water, and wow, a wall of plant life. If you hit the water in just the right way, it sounds like falling fruit, and the machaca will come up to look for it. Jaguars do this to trick the fish. They come up for lunch, and suddenly, they are lunch. Hey, that lizard's running across the river. Let's see what his slick trick is. Come on, get your feet wet. Go speed, lizard! The basilisk lizard moves so quickly it can run across water. See if you can design a fast lizard for our river race course. See Basil, the basilisk lizard at the bottom? Change the size of Basil's feet and the size of Basil's body to make him as speedy as can be. Change Basil's... 
Large feet, small body, an interesting combination. Up to the starting line, and he's off! Look at this one go, folks! I've never seen anything like it! He's running furiously, great form, but will he make it down the final treacherous yards? And yes! He's going all the way! A new winner! A new champion! Holy Toledo, folks! It looks like large feet and a small body make a river racing winner! Look at that lizard go! You just broke a record! Click the reset button to build another basilisk, and that's no monkey business. See you soon! To some, the bright blue morphal butterfly is a symbol of the rainforest. And to some others, their wings are just a piece of jewelry. Thousands of male morphos die this way every year. Smoky Frog Southern River Otter Smoky Frog Morpho Butterfly Morpho Butterfly Mannequin <laughs> this rainforest at a glance map will show us around. Click each As I always say. That Jaguar's had enough of us for now. Let's get back on the bus. Go outside. Forest at a glance map will show us around. One thing. 
thing for sure. This place... Ooh, look at these pretty little frogs. Pretty poisonous, Keisha. That poison dart frog may be puny, but it really packs a punch. So many strange places in the world. I hope I get to see them all. Do I have to see them all before the fifth grade? What's all the flap about? Beetles in the rainforest come in all shapes and sizes. Some are up to three inches long. Some have large pincers. And some even have antlers. I can't wait to draw all these shapes and colors. Look around for things to record in our rainforest travel log. They have lizards by the blizzard down here in the rainforest. From four inch long anolis lizards to six foot long lizards like iguanas and tegus. But there's only one of my favorite kind of lizards, lizards. According to my research, every inch of a rainforest is bursting with life. There are animals. Not every bird in the forest is a tropical species. Many northern birds, like robins and orioles, migrate here for the winter. Uh-oh, I think you woke her up. Just like owls at home, this spectacled owl sleeps by day and hunts by oh, night. Oh. Rainforest beetles come in all colors, too. Take this iridescent tortoise beetle. In some cultures, bright beetles like this one are used for jewelry. Yeah. Who in the world would want to wear bugs? Why do I even ask these questions? Rainforest trees have very shallow roots, so how do they get to be 150 feet tall? Check it out. These braces give the tree all the support it needs to stand up to wind, rain, and the weight of all the other plants that grow on the tree. Tortoise beetle. Poison dart frog. Parakeet. Spectacled owl. Sloth dung. Here's the scoop. You found our missing clone of sloth poop. Wow, the whole room is changing. Jaguar. When the moon is high in the sky, and it's night, lots of animals come out to play. Who could it be who hunts by this winged predator? Owl, tell you what, this is some owl. Good for you, you never threw in the towel. Now we have our clone of a spectacled owl. Use the bio cloner to inspect. 
pets. You might call them pets when these small, this leaf cutting family has some uncles and lots and lots of ants. As I always. Azteca ants live on the Socopia tree. All right, class, let's take it to the bridge. Or at least to... You want to take this outside? Animals hide so well that their tracks are all you'll ever see. Let's see what we can see about the ways animals hide. That is, <laughs> if we can find them. These guys are in disguise. Which is to say that some plants and animals survive by looking like something else. Either something predators won't notice, or something that frightens them off. Wait, that's not bird poop. Those are small caterpillars. What a great disguise. Who would eat bird poop? Many rainforest animals are both rare and stealthy, so we don't see much of them. But we can tell that they've been around by the tracks they leave behind. And if you really want to get the dirt on an animal, tracks are the way to go. According to my research, the animal kingdom is full of con artists and fakes. I think they'd prefer to call it creative survival. Besides, anything goes when it comes down to eating and being eaten. So, how am I supposed to draw these creatures if I can't even tell that they're there? Look carefully, Tim, and use your imagination. In the rainforest, the harder you look, the more you find. The tiger-winged butterfly is very beautiful and very poisonous, so predators avoid eating it. And I bet that lots of other butterflies that aren't poisonous have evolved to look like a tiger wing, so predators will avoid them, too. Wait, that's not bird poop. Those are small...
The Fer de Lance is a pit viper, and like most pit vipers, it sits, coiled in camouflage, waiting for its victims to get close before it struck. According to my research, some species of millipedes can grow up to four inches long. That's a lot of creepy crawly, but when your name means 1,000 legs, I guess you need a lot of room to stretch out. Millipedes have a lot of legs, Tim, but not quite a thousand. Even the biggest millipede only has about 400 legs. This mimic really has her act down pat. She's even swaying slightly as if she were a leaf moving with the breeze. An award-winning performance, I'd say. And if she can hide all day, she's got the night to eat and lay eggs. Careful where you grab a tree in the tropics, or you might find yourself on the business end of a giant tropical ant. They bite and sting really hard. Good thing these inch-long antagonists are usually found wandering solo, looking for food. They eat leaves, dead insects, and nectar from tree seedlings. Giant tropical ants, poop mimics. Tiger wing butterfly mimic, poop mimics. Millipede, fer de lance viper. Butterflies, moths, and especially katydids have learned to disguise themselves as a bunch of different plants. Some look like bark or dead leaves, but this one looks like a chewed up leaf. Now that's what I call going undercover in the understory. When these small creatures say, cut it out, it's time to leave the undetectable and go back to the understory. Piper's piping up to tell us something. Just like we have houses to spend time in, animals have their plants, not to mention other animals. Let's take a look. starting to think that the only place ants don't live in the rainforest is at the bottom of the river. In the Amazon, native peoples crush the roots of this plant and use the powder as a painkiller, just like we use aspirin. 
Of course, it's a good idea to check with an expert, like a tribal doctor, before you go sticking roots in your mouth. The Piper's Spanish name, Candela, comes from the plant's candle-shaped flowers and the fiery, jagged edges of its leaves. Jack be nimble, Jack don't walk, Jack jump over the Piper stalk. Pigeons? They are pigeons in the rainforest? But without any buildings or statues, where will they live? If they're half as smart as they are noisy, I'm sure they'll think of something. I guess all the monkeys that used to swing through here have to take a detour while a new tree builds itself. Hummingbirds go bananas for plantain nectar. But why do plants make nectar? I think it's a fair trade, Ralphie. When the bird flies from flower to flower drinking nectar, it pollinates the flowers so they can make seeds. Roses are red and violets are blue. Keisha's correct, Ralphie, and so are you. Is it just me, or was that snake there the whole time, just waiting for that hummingbird to get too close? Urania caterpillars are jumpy. Anything scary, like an ant or a wasp, and boing, there they go, leaping off their leaf. Good thing they leave a trail of silk behind, so they can climb back up. The piper is the main meal for some tropical bats. So that bat is a piper picker, like Peter Pepper? No, Peter Piper picked a pile of pickled peppers. But no Peter Pepper poses as a Piper picker. Oh, just checking. How can a small part of the rainforest feel so large? Urania moth. Wild plantain. Short-billed pigeon. Hummingbird. Capuchin. Go outside. There's something squirrely about this mammal. Let's check out the garden where it lives. Here we are in a sunny spot of the rainforest. 
what better place for a garden party and the chance to meet lots of fascinating plants and animals. <laughs> to its class, it's time to chirp, whistle, and roar your way through a round of animal chorus. <laughs> The rainforest is full of animal sounds. Join the cacophony of calls, the chorus of grunts and growls, by clicking on the keys below. Play the keys one at a time, like a piano, or click an animal's icon to place it in the forest where you can hear it all the time. Use the mouse to click on the piano keys and play the animal's call. how they fly with those huge bills. They must be really heavy. Well, those beaks are big, Wanda, but they're not solid. They're hollow, with lots of little braces inside to make them strong. Arasaris are the smallest cousin in the toucan family. It sure looks like it. Bigger toucans are shoving it away from the food. Hey, you big birds, go pick on someone your own size. Miss, there are lots of tanagers besides the blue gray tanager. There's also the black and yellow, the blue and gold, the crimson collar, the gray headed, the silver throated, and the spangled cheeked tanagers. What are they trying to do? Disguise themselves as rainbows? They certainly are a bright bunch. As the lantana blooms, it changes from yellow to orange to red to stripes of all three. Gee, that sounds like one of her dresses. I wonder why it changes color like that. Usually there's a reason for anything a plant does, no matter how strange it is. Maybe it tries to look like other flowers so the insects that pollinate them will come to it instead. Blue-gray tanager. Yucatan squirrel. Blue-gray passion flower vine. Arasari. Mandible toucan. Mannequin. Blue gray tanager. Gap grasshopper.
take a lizard-eyed look at life near the ground. It's time to get down, near the ground, that is. Ocelots look and sometimes even act just like regular kitty cats with fancy fur coats. But if you pick one of these up, you're the one who'll get scratched behind the ears. <laughs> the rhinoceros beetle gets its name from the big horn on its head. Well, what else could it remind you of? Hmm, maybe a shiny mouse with antlers and no tail? Nah, let's stick with rhinoceros. Just like house cats, ocelots are excellent hunters and skilled tree climbers. Most of the time. Heliconia's caterpillars like to eat the leaves of the passion flower vine. Of all the mammals in the rainforest, papers are the biggest. Good thing they're herbivores. That means they only eat plants. These giants of the beetle world can grow up to three inches long. That rhinoceros is a big beetle. <coughs> but that beetle has big problems. When it's time to mate, two males will wrestle with their horns until one of them is flipped. And hut, it's time to play Ant Antics. And that's in order. Welcome to Ant Antics. This group of ants is trying to bring food back to their queen. But they're lost. Your mission is to leave the ants home while picking up all the food you can. Watch out for the ant bird, because she's on the lookout for you. Use the arrow keys to move the ants. I know you can find a path through here. Come back the next time you want to bug out with Ant Antics. Woken up that owl. She usually sleeps. Rhinoceros beetle. Heliconius butterfly. Ocelot. Spectacle bared taper. Jaguar. And hut, it's time to play Ant Antics. Goodbye, Ike.
can't wait for you to play Ant Antics again. Use the biocoder. This leaf cutting family has some uncles and Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at the Magic School Bus Explores the Rainforest. We got to visit so many different areas, and I also got to solve some of the puzzles. For some reason, I keep thinking the leaf cutters are the ants, and I'm going to every single ant that I can find. And uh, for some reason, it's not picking it up. I don't know why. But uh, anyways, we did uh, look through each area and do most of the mini games, and I hope you did enjoy this gameplay. Please give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and of course subscribe for more nostalgic gaming. Don't forget the playlist, see all the other Magic School Bus games on this channel. Remember, you are special and loved. You are never alone, and you're always welcome to come back and hang out anytime. Until the next video, God bless. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye, everyone.